What's up everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Well, tonight we're going to talk about something that is going to piss off a bunch of people because there's a lot of people out there that they go by, and this is what's really fucked up, is there is studies that come out, or I think you could just say scientists that would argue that sugar is completely fine. Like it doesn't have any effects other than the fact that you eat it, it gets processed and turned into energy. They, some people literally will say that's it. It's like that's all I did. It's not addictive. doesn't have drug-like effects. And my thing is like, look, anything can be addictive. Literally like this marker can be addictive to some people. Like they can collect this color marker and have 7,000 of these in their house. So like even collecting markers can become addictive to people that are wired that way that have a dopamine serotonin type reward for this color marker, right? So to say that sugar doesn't have that, but this pen can, is like the dumbest shit ever. Like anything, like literally like chewing gum can become addictive. Like um, putting caps on and off fucking things. You can say all oh, the caps have to, I have to put caps on everything. Like it's kind of an OCD thing, but it can be an addiction. Like if you don't do it, you feel like you're fucking losing your mind. Like anything can be addiction. So to say that sugar can not, it's, it's not addictive is a flat out lie because anything can be, anything. So a new study, I'm not sure a new study, but a fairly recent study, NIH, you guys know the National Institute of Health is actually here in Bethesda, Maryland, which is like 10 minutes from where I work, about 20 minutes from my house, depending on traffic. Traffic could be like an hour, but anyways, regardless, I don't know why I give you guys all this fucking useless information, but it's just a little fucking, you know, trivia thing. Did a study where what they just, they found was they were finding a link between people with depression, actual depression, clinical depression, and sugar. And they were like, we think that sugar causes depression. That was the big thing. They were like, we, we're pretty sure this is how this happens. People eat enough sugar for a long enough period of time and it causes depression if you have a genetic predisposition for it. Now, the problem is some people don't know they do. Some people have been on sugar so long that they don't even realize that the sugar could be affecting them because they've been eating it since they were a kid. They have no idea, but they just think they have depression problems and now they're trying to make that link between sugar and um, depression. Now, this is what is really awesome about science, right? Some people are going to jump right up right now before, without even watching the rest of this video, without even hearing the rest of it. say, Jerry, that's fucking bullshit. That's not fucking real. You're fucking stupid. Listen to the rest of the video. This is the problem. Some people watch half the videos and they don't fucking get it. Scientists went and they studied it. And they, they said there was a link. Sugar in depression. Wow. Holy shit. And they said some of it is from the highs and the lows. You can actually get a dopamine rush from the sugar. And there's going to be a crash from it. That crash can actually cause panic attacks and major anxiety in people that have a predisposition for depression. It can actually de trigger a depressive episode, right? Now, they're not arguing that. They said this is actually a real thing. But what they found was something interesting. They were like, not all the cases were like that. They were depressed. They did have sugar in the diets. But what they did was they found that there was another thing they needed to look at. And this is the first time I've ever actually really looked, like read this about sugar before. They reverse engineered the study. So I was like, what the fuck? Like that really opened my eyes. I was like, what? that sounds really cool. Well, I've never seen anything like this. Let me check it out. So what they found out was by reverse engineering the study by saying, okay, let's say the people didn't eat sugar, the ones that, you know, they were trying to see that something was different about it. They didn't necessarily eat sugar that caused depression what if they were depressed already from birth, genetic predisposition, and they were on sugar so long, like since birth, they pretty much, their parents just fed them sugar, like whatever, and they increased the sugar dosages that triggered the depression. So they caused the depression themselves by eating the sugar because they were already depressed. So they caused worse depression and anxiety by eating more sugar. And they said, holy shit, this is what happened. They actually had depression already then ate more sugar than they normally would to compensate for the depression because they get a dopamine rush from it. They had a serotonin rush from it. So they're medicating themselves with sugar because of depression. It's like, fuck, now we found two different links. One, that if you have enough sugar for a long enough period of time and you have those highs and lows throughout the day, that it will or can, excuse me, can cause anxiety, depression, panic disorders in people that are predisposed for them. Now think about this. How many people out there are predisposed for that shit nowadays? A lot of fucking people. And they don't even realize it. And then they have the flip side of the coin that people that already had severe depression were using sugar as a crutch, as a drug to get by because they feel better when they eat enough sugar because they do get that dopamine rush. So they found two reasons 
are two ways linking sugar to depression. Now, I like to always speak from experience if I can, because I feel like if I haven't experienced something, I really have no business talking about it. So I can speak to you guys on a level right now, coming from a heroin addict. I was a heroin addict for three years. I've been in recovery for 16 years out without one single relapse ever. When I stopped, I stopped. That was it. Done. Now, I can tell you 100% for a fact that when you go into rehab, they actually tell you to uptake your sweets because it helps with withdrawal. And this going before that, right before I ever went to the rehab facility, a friend of mine who uh, has since passed away of a drug overdose, heroin overdose actually, we ran out of drugs and there was an individual in New York that my buddy had shipped him a lot of Oxycontin. We're talking hundreds of Oxycontin 80s. And he called the guy and said, hey, do you still have those? And the guy's like, dude, you sold them to me like three days ago. He's like, I'm out. I need them. And the dude was like, you're, you're out of it. He's like, he was like, fine, whatever. What do you want me to do? He's like, mail them. So this dude goes to the post office, mails them, right? So my buddy calls me and he says, we can't wait. I'm too sick. Let's drive to New York. It's going to take about four hours. Let's drive to New York and pick them up. So he calls the guy back. The guy goes to the post office, says, oh, I forgot to wrap something in it. I got to take it home, repack it, and then I'll reship it. Gets the box of Oxycontins back. My boy comes to my house to pick me up in his truck. He's got these big boxes of cookies. And I get in the truck. I go, dude, what the fuck's up with the cookies? He's like, if we eat the cookies, we'll feel better on the ride. And I was like, what? I'm like, a fucking cookie? He's not a cookie, cookies. So as we start driving, we're eating these fucking cookies, right? The more cookies they eat, the better I felt. The more it was actually stopping the withdrawal symptoms from happening. I wasn't feeling the withdrawals as much. I was like, holy shit. So by the time we got to New York, we eating these two fucking big ass boxes of fucking cookies, which was a lot of fucking sugar and a lot of cookies. But we had this sugar buzz, this sugar rush. We were on a high. And although we were still withdrawing and clamming, sweating and stomach aches and shit, we're still able to function and drive there to get the rest of the fucking Oxycontins. So once we get the Oxycontins and took that, we didn't feel the sugar anymore. We didn't feel any sugar crash because we were high on the Oxycontins. But the bottom line was sugar curbed the fucking withdrawal symptoms in fast. So if you're going to tell me, any of you motherfuckers out there, any of you fucking, fucking armchair quarterback, fucking keyboard warriors out there, whether you read studies or not, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. If you think that sugar is not a drug to some people, there's not a drug-like effect, you're a fucking fool. Plain and simple. Drug addicts for years, decades, fucking eons, have been using sugar to combat withdrawal symptoms. So I don't give a fuck who comes out with a study because there's no fucking way you can sit there and over and over again have this evidence in your face, this anecdotal evidence in your fucking face shoved up your fucking nose and tell me it doesn't exist because some asshole did a study with sugar on fucking two people and uh, what the fuck? I don't give a fuck what those studies say. You walk into a rehab facility and ask and there's fucking thousands if not tens of thousands of those fuckers across the country and think about how many people are in each one that they have seen that over and over again, why don't you go fucking study that? Why don't you sit down and fucking take a person that's on fucking opiates, take the fucking opiates away from them, give them cookies and watch how they react. Then take the cookies away and watch how they react. Then give them the cookies back and watch how they react. If you're trying to tell me, and don't tell them what it's supposed to do, just leave the fucking cookies there. Leave the cookies there and fucking walk out of the fucking room. Leave them only there with cookies. Those motherfuckers, I'm telling you right now, know enough. Your brain, it's, it's a fucked up thing. Even if you didn't know that those cookies are supposed to ease the pains of withdrawal, your brain fucking knows. It's the weirdest shit. As soon as it smells that sugar, you get a sugar craving. As soon as you're fighting, you don't even know you're smelling it. They can be in the fucking package. You're still, you don't understand how powerful your smell is. Just because you don't smell it doesn't mean you're not actually smelling it. Anybody that's ever been in a contest prep before that has cut their sugar out and been close to a contest and a pizza gets delivered to their work or their house for their family or something, you can smell the sugar in the pizza. We didn't even know there was sugar in pizza, but you can smell it in the sauce. You can smell it because you're so deprived of sugar. Your brain wants it so bad. It's telling you, like, motherfucker, there's sugar in there. Go get it. So if you're in, you know, this situation where they put you in a room, take the opiates away, put the cookies down, within minutes, you're going to open those cookies and you're going to start eating them. And you're going to start feeling better. You're not going to understand why. Because they never did a study on it, so it doesn't exist. So you don't know. Then have somebody come in there and take those cookies away from them. You're going to see somebody that fucking realizes, like, look, you're taking these cookies. Fuck you and your cookies. Fine, whatever. When that sugar high starts to wear off, they're going to be like, fuck. I'm starting to withdraw again. It's worse. Oh, my God. You're sweating. The You'll see the panic. You'll see the anxiety. You'll see the fucking stomach hurt. You'll see it all come back. Go back in there and give them the cookies again. They'll dive at those fucking cookies to get them. Like you had them fucking packed in heroin or something. 
They'll fucking eat the cookies. Go back in there and take them away. I bet you don't get them away next time. But you go in there to take them away and those motherfuckers fight you so that you don't take them away because they understand now what it's doing. So be aware, guys. I don't give a shit who out there fucking talks about sugar is fine, sugar is Fuck all you guys. All you guys that sit in your fucking house on a computer and don't know shit about the fucking real world have never felt anything like that and they've never actually dug into this shit. You know what I mean? It's like studies like this for NIH. Don't tell me that one doesn't count. Fuck you guys. You guys always like to minimize data that comes out from shit that goes against your fucking your rhetoric well that's fucking bullshit because there's shit that comes out every day that goes against what you're saying that you try to discredit and fucking ruin when it's real facts it's real information don't tell NIH that they're fucking stupid those motherfuckers are on the cutting edge of a lot of shit I know some of the scientists personally I know one neuroscientist that works there and another guy that's in the biology department and these motherfuckers I'm telling you right now are not stupid motherfuckers and they're the ones doing the studies so believe me guys you can fucking fight it all you want. I know you like sugar. Everybody does. You know why? Because sugar is a fucking drug. Everybody likes caffeine. You know why? Because it's a fucking drug, although it's labeled as a drug. Some people would say, well, the caffeine in coffee is not because it's natural. I mean, there's so many fucking ways to spin shit. I'm just like, listen, asshole. Put something in your body, get a drug-like effect. Can we agree on that? Uh, can we agree on that? Uh, motherfucker, agree on it, okay? Because bottom line is, eat sugar, drug effect. Take caffeine, drug effect. Take heroin, drug effect. All different effects, all different drugs, but still have an effect on the fucking brain. And if you can have an effect from sugar that's pow enough, powerful enough to cut through withdrawals, I'll tell you right now, anybody that's ever been through those motherfuckers knows you, you Tylenol doesn't work, fucking Advil doesn't work, aspirin doesn't work, fucking the only thing that works is another opiate to fucking cut that withdrawal. But sugar does it. So sugar does something to those opiate receptors in the brain, which I don't know exactly what it is, but it does fucking work on those opiate receptors. Because I've seen and felt it myself with plenty of my friends. And it's not like, well, causation, no, fuck you. It works. We would not have been eating those fucking cookies if it didn't work. I didn't know what it did. I had no fucking clue. I thought he was out of his fucking tree. But the bottom line is, if it didn't work, people suffering from heroin, trust me, they don't want to chew. They don't want to think. They don't want to move. They don't want to smile. They don't do anything they don't have to do. They just want to sit there. So the fact that they're chewing these fucking cookies and swallowing over and over again and drinking water to get them down means they're feeling an effect from it. Don't fucking bastardize that and act like it's not happening. Call people fucking crazy. Because in the real world, you don't understand what the fuck they're going through and what's happening to their brain. Because you don't understand it, you fucking say it doesn't happen. But we have study after study like this, and this was on fucking humans, not rats. A lot of people like to pop up and go, well, Jerry, studies on sugar because of sugar and cocaine. And they gave the sugar to the rats and the cocaine to the rats. And the rats fucking left the cocaine alone and went after the sugar. Well, this is not rats. These are fucking humans, motherfucker. It was done at NIH. So there's no more bullshit about what, well, it's animals. No, these are fucking humans. And they found a link 100% between depression, or excuse me, sugar amounts causing depression in people that have predispositions and people that are depressed seeking out more sugar to combat the feelings that they feel with the sugar that gives you the sugar rush. A dopamine effect, a drug-like effect. This has been fucking studied. This has been fucking stamped as real. And you can't argue it. But my goal here is not to like bastardize sugar. It's to get you guys to fucking think. Like, if you're going to the doctor and you're having these depression, depression issues over and over again, you got a big fucking sugar diet, cut the sugar out and see what happens. What's the worst that happens? You have to not have sugar for a month? If it doesn't work, go back to eating sugar again. But the bottom line is, if you can do something natural that may help your situation, help you feel better, fuck, you're shoving drugs and shit in your body and alcohol in your body to feel better. Why not do that one natural thing that is just basically not stuffing yourself full of candy for a month to see what happens? Makes sense to me. Bowstringtraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. But so fight. Bowstring.com is a blog. It's a hashtag Jerry Logic on this motherfucker. And we are out.